Hello. Today, we're going to be looking at how easy it is to add TradingView's charting library to a web page. We won't be using any extra JavaScript libraries like React or Angular for this example, but we'll assume you have some basic understanding of web development in general. To start, we need to download the charting library files from GitHub. The latest version can be found at github.com slash tradingview slash charting library. Let's download the files. Now that we've downloaded the files, let's create a new directory to contain our source code. I'll call it example. And let's copy the charting library and data feeds directories into this new directory. I'll open the new directory in VS Code and let's create a index.html file. We need to add two script references to this file. First, a reference to charting library slash charting library dot standalone dot JS, which contains the code to create the chart widget. And secondly, a reference to data feeds slash UDF slash dist slash bundle dot JS which contains a sample data feed implementation, which we'll use to load data. Let's also add a div with an ID of chart container. And finally, a third script tag where we'll initialize the chart. Referencing the standalone charting library file, we'll have added a trading view object the global scope, and we can use the widget constructor on that object to create the chart. This constructor requires some basic parameters to create the chart. First of all, we need to specify the container we want to use. So we can just use the ID of the div we created here. We could also pass a instance of a HTML element, but let's just use the ID for this example. We'll also specify the locale that we want the chart to use, so in this case, English. And third, we need to specify the library path. The library path is used to tell the charting library where it can load the additional HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files it needs to render the chart. In our case, for this example, we're going to be serving the files as they are laid out in this directory relative to the index.html file. So we can just use charting library as the library path, since this directory contains all the files. We also need to tell the chart which data it should load initially. To do that, or well, to provide the data, we're going to use the sample UDF compatible data feed that TradingView provides. Like with the TradingView widget constructor, because we referenced this bundle script, it will have been added to the global scope. So we can use data feeds dot UDF compatible data feed to create a data feed instance. In this case, this constructor requires that you pass the URL of the server it's going to use as its first argument. So let's use HTTPS demo feed data tradingview.com. Let's set the initial symbol to Apple with an interval of one day. Finally, let's also make the chart widget full screen so that it takes up all the space on the page. And let's enable debug mode, which will print some extra logs to the browser console. Let's save this file and serve it locally so we can check that everything's working. I'm going to use Python's HTTP server module to serve the current directory locally on port 5000. 
but you could use whichever web server you're most comfortable with or most familiar with. So let's run that and let's load localhost 5000 in Chrome. And there we are. Our chart is loaded with the symbol Apple and the interval one day that we specified. If we open the console, we can see the debug logs are being printed telling us which version of the library we're using, the data feed settings, symbol info that's been loaded, and details about the data that's been requested. So there we have it, a working chart connected to our demo data feed. Hopefully this was useful and shown you how easy it can be to add a simple, uncustomized chart to a web page.